Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I lift you up on today. I magnify your holy name. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You're worthy in the name of Yeshua. Oh, Koda Mashe. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning and good morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something is going to break, you guys. I'm listening to some Kiki Shears, and she wrote a song called Something Has to Break. But I'm telling you, something's going to break. Okay, something's going to break. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I got a powerful message for you on today because we got some events that's about to take place, and I want you to be safe. In the refuge of the Lord. I want you to be safe in the refuge of our Father. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. And as we move closer and closer to the coming of the Antichrist, or not to the coming of the Lord, he's coming, but the Antichrist is going to get here first. I'm sorry to tell you because he's already here. Oh, hallelujah. So it's going to get a little bit worse. Oh, hallelujah, until the doctrines of the kingdom have been preached in all the world. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's to break. Something's going to break. Something's going to break. Something has to break. Something has to break. Something's going to break now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. What am I saying? Something's going to break. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. Ah! Something's going to break. Something's going to break. Oh, hallelujah. Something's going to break. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you my picture, but I'm going to listen to a little bit more of this. This is Kiki Shears, and I do not own the rights to this music. These, this music does not belong to me, but it belongs to Kiki Shears. I just don't want anybody to come for copyrights for me, okay? So, but I want you to know that this is a song to worship, especially if you've been, it for, been in it for a long time. If you've been up under it for a long time, you got to say to yourself that something is going to break. I said something has got to break. Oh, hallelujah. But if we want power, we got to go through. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't say the fake stuff. I said power. Power to cast out devils. Power to heal the sick. Power to raise the dead. Or oh, I don't know if anybody want to be raised in this hour. Oh, hallelujah. But I glorify him on this morning. I lift him up. I lift him up. Oh, hallelujah. He's worthy in the name of Yeshua. The Bible say that offenses will come, but woe through who they come. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name. I love this song, you guys. It's called Something's Got to Break by Kiki Shears. Oh, hallelujah. It's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song, you guys. Oh, hallelujah. Something's got to break, you guys. He's holding us up. He's holding us up. He's holding us up. I said he's holding us up. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we're at the end and Satan don't want me to say anything but God keep making me come up oh hallelujah glory to your name oh Lord oh hallelujah glory to God oh hallelujah I'm gonna be talking about tricked and trapped I say so many people have been tricked and trapped by who by the Antichrist it's an antichrist stupid um, um, system. It's an it's a antichrist system. A system that has deceived almost everyone. Oh, hallelujah. But God is going to bring his people out right in the nick of time. He's going to bring them out. I said he's going to bring them out. Oh, hallelujah. I'm listening to some Kiki Shears. He said, she said, something's got to break. Something's going to break. But he's holding us up. He's holding us up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh my God. Oh, hallelujah. I got a picture for you. I want to show you real quick. 
I want to show you what you're going through, okay? I'm going to show you why we got to go through. Um, this picture is um, dealing with spiritual contamination, okay? Spiritual contamination. And I want you to see here that this is the outskirt in which most people live. Okay, and then some make it to the soul. Some make it to the soulish realm. I say some make it to the soulish realm, you guys. But most live out here. They live out here and they pray. And when they pray, they go into the soulish realm. Um, they never make it to here because if they make it here, then power will come out here. And those they attack will automatically something bad would happen to them. So we don't want anything bad to happen to our enemy. But we need need our enemies to break the shell of the flesh, to break the, come on, to break the lies of the soul so we can reach the spirit man. And once we go in, it's, a over, it's over. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Now, the things that I got connected to the outside, these are snakes. These are scorpions. These are the things that bite you. These are the things that connect to your flesh. Relationship, people that you try to trust in. Uh -huh. the, these, these are the things that connect to the outer man. But you cannot be contaminated because the spirit man is all the way in here. He is hidden. He is hidden in God. I say he's hidden in God. And you got to get to him because you can't have no power without him. Okay? So we got to crack the flesh. We got to come on. The flesh must be destroyed in order for us to have power that will bring deliverance to the masses. And then we got to go to the soul that has been deceived by the knowledge of the world. That has been deceived by the heart and the emotion and which we are led by when we are led by our feelings which have been deceived by our own will because we go after the things that's been given out here but once you get in here and once the ball begins to penetrate and that is the spirit of the almighty that dwell in us once it begins to penetrate the light will begin to disperse the light will begin to disperse and the next thing you know there will be a turning a turning of the soul and then a turning of the flesh and that's where we got to go y'all that's where Christ came to take us oh hallelujah I'm gonna turn this off I want to go into my lesson on today God bless each and every one of you I'm gonna go up even if nobody's here I'm gonna go up anyway and then I'm gonna share it onto my YouTube page okay but I'm gonna go up anyway even if no one's here and let me say this okay um you can't listen to gossip and 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 listen to people tear other people down because people that um that talk about people generally they talk about everybody so you can't listen to gossip you can't listen to people that tear other people down and call yourself a believer and i know that many people are somewhat um if you don't have the real deal then i'm not a person for you okay because you're benefiting off of the lie but I am going to say this. The lie is not going to work too much longer. I said the lie is not going to work too much longer. They're going to do another spray job. I just wanted to let you know that. They're going to do another spray job. And people are not going to be prepared. People are not going to be prepared. And so I put down tricked, okay, and trapped. Trapped on the outside. I showed you the picture where you got to go all the way in, but he kept people on the outside living after the appetite of the flesh. He kept people on the out on the outside living after the knowledge of the soul. Uh huh. He kept them on the outside. So when the next spray come, they would just perish. See, because if you can't get into God, if you are locked out of God because you have fulfilled the lust of the flesh, you have fulfilled the appetite of the flesh, when this next spray come, you're going to be in a world of trouble. I said, you're going to be in a world of trouble. God bless you, sis. It's so good to see you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I'm coming from Romans, the eighth chapter. I'm coming from Romans, the eighth chapter. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, baby. So good to see you. I ain't seen you in a long time, Tracy. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm coming from Romans, the eighth chapter. And it says here in the eighth chapter, I want to start at the fourth verse, that the righteousness of the law might, so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled, come on, in us who Walk not after the flesh. This is for people that think that it's all right to do whatever you want to do and say that you're saved. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And notice that they have M-I-N-D. That means that's where your mind is located. It is located on the flesh. The things of the flesh. Oh, come on. And they are after and they are not after the spirit. Because those that are after the spirit have their mind on the spirit. And those that are after the flesh have their mind on the flesh. For to be carnally minded. Uh-huh. Is death. And so we see where the carnal kind of mind is going. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. I said it's life and it's peace. So we can't even have peace unless we come into alignment with the spirit of our eternal father. We can't even have peace unless we come into alignment with the spirit of Yah, with the spirit of God. Because the carnal mind uh, uh -huh, is enmity. It is an enemy of God. So no, they're not going to like you if you choose to live after the spiritual content of Yah. They're not going to like you. They're not going to love you because they don't have love. They have God, but they don't have him. And what I mean by that, they got his knowledge, but they don't know him. They have his knowledge. If they knew him, then they wouldn't be in the flesh. They would be in the spirit. And so they have his knowledge, but they don't have him. And so people have knowledge about people, but they don't know the people themselves. And this is how it is with the word of God. Many people have the word of God, but they don't have God. And so now we plan Russian roulette and we don't understand who people are because we have been locked out of the house. We have been locked out of the, come on, just because you got um, material things don't mean you ain't locked out. It means that your appetite has become greater than your spiritual substance because the wealth of the kingdom is inward. It has nothing to do with the material realm. It has everything to do with you being rich redeem. And when you do begin to prosper, materialistically speaking, then that will be to accommodate you in the mission. It has nothing to do with fulfilling you. Listen to what it says though. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yah, against God. For it is not subject to the law. I said it can't be subject to the law. Uh -uh. The flesh will never subjugate itself to the law uh -huh, of God. Neither indeed can it ever be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And so I just want to put that out there for those that think that it's okay that, to live any kind of way, to do whatever you want to do and think that you are pleasing the most high. No, he loves everybody. I said he loves everybody. There is no one that he didn't love. He loved Hitler, believe it or not. But he loves everybody because he is love. But love is also correction. And when we are not willing to be corrected, when we are not willing to go in the direction of the Lord, then what is to come will affect those that have been locked out of the house. And you know, sometimes they used to say, if one person is going to hell, they want to take a whole lot of people with them. Do you know that a whole lot of people are going to hell because they're following people that have already made a choice to make their home here in the earth right now? They don't care about the heavenly domain. They want all that they want right now. And so they're taking souls with them to hell. And so you got to make up in your mind that you're not going to follow the crowd because the Bible say wide is the way that leadeth unto destruction broad. That means and many there be that enter thereat, but few there be that find that narrow path, which is the kingdom that dwell in you, the kingdom that dwell in me. And guess what? If it dwells in you, you ca you got to abandon this part in order to gain that part. And so that's why I was showing you that picture. They got to penetrate the outside. But the Bible say offenses will come, but woe to them that it comes through. You're going you gonna to be offended, and they're going to be offended by you. And then they're going to come after you, but you need the enemy to break the flesh because they, that means that you, they're your friend. That's why Christ said to Judas, where do you come from? My friend, because his friend led him to his destination, which was the cross. So we got to understand that if we want power to cast out devils, if we want power to heal the sick, we got to break that thing that is not able. Uh -huh. You can do all of the form. You can do it all you want to, because that's how Rome set this thing up, that you would do a form of God, but you lack power because people are not being delivered. Show sure enough, but because deliverance bring you to the father. I said deliverance breaks the shell. It breaks off the demons and it gives you a clear view into you so you can
and get to your daddy. Oh, hallelujah. And so as I continue to go on, it say, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God or Yah dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have the spirit of Christ, um, do not have the spirit of Christ. He is none of his. And so you say you got the spirit of Christ, but you live in the flesh. But the Bible say when you have his spirit, you walk in the spirit. You live in the spirit and you live in accordance to the spirit. And so if you just trying to live holy, but yet you ain't got into that innermost being, you're going to make it there. You 60 percent in. See, the 30 percent is the flesh that have surrendered and now they're ready to be moralized. The 60 percent is the soul that has purged the flesh and now the soul is being cleansed and that's the 60%. But the hundredfold is when you are redeemed, is when you are restored, is when you have been resurrected according to the spiritual redemption of Christ. So you can't say so if you have not been redeemed because the Bible say, let the redeem of the Lord say so. But if you are not redeemed, how are you going to be redeemed if you're walking after the flesh? You can't be redeemed. Let's go to the sixth chapter real quick. Let's go to the sixth chapter real quick of the of Romans. Okay. I just want you to know that there is a wage to those that walk in the flesh. The Bible say that we are no longer indebted to that man. We should no longer be up under the covenant of that man. But if we have been spiritually redeemed, if we have been spiritually restored, then why are we living in accordance to the flesh? So you got to understand that Christ didn't abolish the law like many people think, but he fulfilled the law because the spirit man did what the flesh cannot do. And so he gave us spiritual access to live something in the spirit that could not be done in the flesh. And so if you're talking about you're hidden in Christ, you're not hidden in Christ unless you have been what? Spiritually redeemed because Christ ain't coming to the flesh. He wants you to come to him. I say you got to come to the Lord. And that's what you mean. That's what he mean when he say come to Jesus or come to Yahshua. You got to come to him for real. I didn't say come to a church which is all right if they're teaching you the truth. I didn't say come to, come on, come come to the knowledge. I said come to him. The knowledge is a bridge into him. And so it begins to transform the soul. It begins to transform the flesh until we are turned away from the outer man into the spirit that's waiting for you to return home to the house. You have left yourself. You have left who you were destined to be. You have left what you were called to be. You have been reigning in the outer man understanding by the way of the world, the religious way of doing things, but not the spiritual way of being restored. You got to be restored. This is a kingdom message. This is not a religious message. This is a kingdom message. It is a spiritual message. Yeah, he gave a lot of religions so people can pick. Okay, but this is one kingdom that Christ spoke about and it had nothing to do with religion, but it had everything to do with you. And if you are not redeemed, if you are not restored, then you are already in trouble and they're trying to spray people again and that's what they're going to do and if you are not in the house then you are locked outside you are trapped outside and you will die as the world and that's why the shell must be broken and that's why the soul must be transformed and turned towards the spirit and in the spirit where people go in uh huh, but they shut the door behind them and when you go into the spirit when the snakes come out to the flesh and try to influence the soul with deposit, the spirit man washes it clean because he is a fire and he purges what should not be there. And so when people do these things, they don't realize that they are coming into the court of God because we have already come into his place through praise and worship. This is the courtroom of God. He said, enter into my court. Come on with praise. Didn't he say that? Okay. Thanksgiving. And into into to my court with um with thanksgiving my 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 okay into to my 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 house with praise and my courts with thanksgiving okay let's get it right let's get it right okay so let's go to this one real quick let's go to this one real quick I just want people to know you guys that the law was not abolished I don't know why people think that why do you think that the law was abolished no the law was not abolished the law was fulfilled. Okay, the law was fulfilled. Let me let me let me do um um the third verse real quick before I go to the sixth chapter. The law was fulfilled. The third verse in the same chapter of the chapter eight. For for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, like I just said. 
God or Yah sending his own son in the in the in the likeness of sinful flesh uh huh um in for sin condemn sin in the flesh that means you ain't got no more excuse why because that the that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in him and you no longer have to walk after the flesh that is condemned by the law but now you can walk after the spirit that is no longer uh huh trapped on the outside by the flesh. But people are not doing this. They are making an excuse to live any kind of way. They are saying that Christ died so they can go and live like H-E-double-L. No, he did not die so you can live any kind of way. He died, but he rose again to give you a doorway into the spiritual domains of God. And so if you're not going in, so it means that you're trapped outside. Don't let the devil trick you with all of his treats because he got a lot of treats for those that have appetite issues, those that are trapped by their appetite, those that are trapped by their lust, those that are trapped by the outer man that needs to be abolished, that needs to be done away with. I said, you can't live by that man any longer. Either you're going to live on the inside or you're going to live on the outside, but you can't live in two domains at the same time. Uh uh-uh, You are one entity and either you're going to live on the inside or you're going to live on the outside. Look at what it says in the sixth chapter of Romans. Oh, hallelujah. Knowing this, that our old man is, I'm in the sixth verse, you guys, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Uh huh. It ain't crucified because he died. It's crucified because we crucified it. Okay. It's crucified because we crucified it. That the body of sin might be destroyed. I said it's supposed to be destroyed. So why are you telling people it's all right to live in accordance to that and they're going to be all right with God? No, you're taking people to hell with you because that's not the scripture. The scriptures say, the scriptures say that henceforth, um, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We're not supposed to be serving sin. We're not supposed to be yielding to sin because now we have the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ that empowered us to live in accordance to the kingdom. Now, if we be dead with Christ, that means we have turned away from the man that cannot keep the law. We turned away from the outer man that is in covenant with the world. We turned away from this man and we are now abiding in the spirit. Now some people have got trapped in the soul and they're living out of the knowledge of the truth but the truth have not been redeemed. It has not crossed over into the spirit man that lives off of the, come on, the, the food of the word. It is his food. It is his meat. Oh hallelujah. He is redeemed through it. He is restored through it. He recognizes himself through the mirror of the word. But if you're not heir, if you're just living in the soul, trying to use the word as a knowledge-based system. Uh, it's still a system because you're still in the body system. It's still a system. You're still working out the form. Uh huh. You you want to have some power to overcome what they're trying to do to the to this next move. In this next move, then you're gonna have to move away from the place of appetite. He has deceived everybody. You guys, he's he's deceived everybody. People are deceived. They are they are dreadfully deceived. He's deceived everybody. And it's a shame that you can't join with people. You can't connect with people without them trying to hurt you or something. But then you got to realize that people have the word and they're trying to make a market out of it. They want to make money out of it. Don't realize that once they get to God, that he has someone already set in place to give you what you need to do the mission. But no, you got to compromise and you got to use the word to try to hurt your own sisters and brothers. That's not God. That's you, the Pharisee, the Sadducee, those that kill Christ. You are those people, okay? But if you continue to read, it goes on to say, For he that is dead is free from sin. So if you don't kill your flesh, of course you're not free from sin. You're not free from sin. But why is he talking like this? He said, Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. So he was raised from the dead, so we would never have to die again. Okay, so that's why the old saints used to say, if you die now, you won't have to die later. Oh, hallelujah. Knowing that the Christ, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more. 
death have no more dominion over him. Oh, hallelujah. And that's what my situation looked like right now, like a dead situation. But trust me when I tell you, death is the beginning of resurrection. Death is the beginning of redemption. Death is the beginning of power. We got to die to gain power. We got to die to the opinions of others. We got to die to those that think that they got it and you don't. We got to die to it all so we can live in him. And when the ball drop, we will have have what it takes to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to do those things that are pleasing in the sight of the Lord, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin one time. I said one time. Uh -huh. He died unto sin one time, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto Yah, unto the great I am. Likewise reckon ye, ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. So why are you still sinning if you're supposed to be dead to it? Or you think you dead because he died? No, he died and you got to die because he said we had to mortify the deeds of our flesh because the wages of sin is still death. I said the wages of sin is still death. That's your wage. That's what you, you're going to get paid. You're indebted to that wage because you're still in sin. And the Bible says that he came to lead us out through spiritual redemption. He came to lead us out through spiritual resurrection. And that means that we are connecting to the inside and we are no longer led by appetite. We are no longer not led by the knowledge of the world, by the emotions that are turned topsy-turvy through the, come on, through all of the, um, the warfare and all of these things. We're no longer moved by that, but we are moved by the spirit that dwell within us. Oh, hallelujah. So we got to understand that when we move towards life, Death is inevitable in the flesh. Death to your so-called ministry. Death to all the things that you think are great. <laughs> Death to, look, friendships. Death to family. Death to all of these things die on the outside when you are moving towards the spiritual redemption of Yah. And we got to have power in this next move because the devil is crazy. He has lost his mind and he's about to do another spray. And he's making it clear that there's going to be another spread. And so we got to understand and let somebody go in and get the power of the Lord so the sick can be healed, so the dead can be raised. We all are in trouble. Oh, hallelujah. Who's willing to sacrifice? Who's willing to die that others might live? Well, the Come on, the red dragon took this thing out of the custody of the church and they made a system called the Antichrist and they tricked everybody with a whole lot of treats. And now people are trapped on the outside. They cannot get in. Oh, hallelujah. And now you got snakes biting you. Come on, come on. That's what they do. They come and bite us. Come on, you see what they're doing? They're biting you, the snakes. These are snakes biting the flesh, trying to re trying to um, produce stuff in the soul. Look at that. Trying to produce stuff in the soul, trying to produce their serm sermon or their, their, their sperm in the soul. They can't touch this because this is, the, this is the spirit of God that lays dormant until we enter in with great surrenderance, with all surrenderance. Uh -huh. And so they can't touch this, but if you're in there, God pushes that stuff out. He pushes it out of the soul. He pushes it out of the flesh and it's non-effective towards you because you are connected to the almighty within. And so don't worry about what they're doing. And so they attach themselves to bite you, to deposit in you. And as long as God is in you, I'm telling you, the fire of God will burn up everything they try to deposit. Uh huh. The fire of God will burn up and purge everything that don't belong there. I said, because this is his vessel. We are the temples of the most high Yah. We are the temples of the most high God. The word Yah simply means the God of Israel. We are the temple of the most high Yah. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to what he says here. So those that say that, no, 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 no. God is with us. God, no, no. If you are carnally minded, the Bible say you are walking in death. Death is your portion. You are dead because you remain in the flesh. You are dead because you remain in the outward, you in the outer court. You ain't even washed yourself. In, 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 in the tabernacle, they had to wash themselves in the outer court. They had to cleanse themselves in the outer court. So you ain't even cleansed yourself and you are in the outer court. You ain't even moved into the holy place, which is a place where the soul is supposed to be turned by the 
the reading of the word, by the washing of the word, the soul that is, come on, influenced by world knowledge is now being fed by the knowledge of the Most High. It is now being fed by the Spirit of the Most High because He understands the word and He reveals the word to those that love Him. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Listen to this, you guys. The Bible says that those that are carnally minded <coughs> are walking in death. And they're taking a lot of people with them because they don't want to go to hell by themselves. If you're teaching people that living in sin is okay, then you are taking people to hell because the wages of sin is still death. And now that the system is set up, it's ready now because everybody's trapped on the outside. Most people are in the 30 percent. They gave up 30 percent. They gave up 60 percent. Yeah, they cleansed the soul. That's a good thing. You're halfway there. You're over half there. You're 60 percent in. But they did not surrender it all, which is the 100 percent, which will cause the spirit of God to raise up in you. And you will be able to be a conduit in order for other people to be reached by the spirit that's dwelling and moving through you. But if you just got knowledge, this knowledge is what Satan left heaven with. He left with the knowledge of God so he can be like God. But he he is not like God. And so we understand that he gave people an ego so they can think that there's something that they are not. Oh, yeah. Many people are operating in the ego. That's not power. Power is not loud. Power is not high minded. Power is not exalted. Power is humble because it understands the influence of power. Uh -huh. God understands his influence. He don't have to prove anything to anybody. He don't have to do all of that. But we need to have some power when they release this next. <laughs> okay. All right. They're creating stuff just to exterminate people. They're exterminating people. This is a global agenda. This is not just here. It's a global agenda that Satan has put in place to exterminate people. Why? Why is he doing that? Okay. All right. So you got to have the real deal. I'm almost done. So look at what he says here. Alive unto God through Jesus or Yeshua Christ, our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. Why would he say that? Now, this is Paul's writing. As a matter of fact, do you realize that the New Testament is Paul's experience? And what the Christian church did was took the doctrine and the books of Paul and used that as a method to get us saved. They got rid of the kingdom message because you ain't going in. You just modifying yourself. You just walking in the form of God. You just dilly. That's why you steal all the stuff in the church. The ism, the schism, all the, this is Paul's experience with the Gentile, but this has nothing to do with the kingdom message of Christ. Uh -uh, the kingdom message of Christ did not even go towards the Gentile, but I'm just letting you know right now. But Paul's message was that you're going to have to deny that thing. You're going to have to put that thing under because he struggled with his flesh. He buffered his flesh. He had somebody to be a thorn in his flesh because he stayed in his flesh. Do you understand that? He was still in the flesh. Okay. So so you understand that Paul is giving you his experience and people are living out of the experience of Paul, but they are not moving in to the kingdom where Christ told us to dwell. He told us to dwell in the kingdom. As a matter of fact, he told us to seek ye first, according to Matthew 6 and 33, the kingdom of righteousness. Righteousness is not works. Righteousness is what God spoke, what God thought before the foundation of the world. This is righteousness. And so as you move towards the spirit, the dead will... <laughs> Everything begins to die out here. I said everything begins to die out here because you're moving in here. But when the redemption comes, then people will be looking to be redeemed. People will be looking to be healed. People will be looking to be restored back to their heavenly domain. And you will be the answer because you were willing to make the sacrifice. Because you were willing to go in when nobody wanted to support you. You were willing to do what you needed to do in order to get to the power that is able to redeem in order to get to the power that is able to restore. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a shay. Okay. So we got to understand that people attach to that because they don't have no anointing. People attach to that because they don't have any power. People attach to that because they're trying to get something that they weren't willing to die for. They weren't willing to die for the truth. They weren't willing to die to gain the inside. And so they're trying to use the, the word of God to live a carnal life. 
when the Bible say to be carnally minded is death. So when they come to bite you, to suck you out right here in the flesh, uh huh. Don't worry about it. It ain't nothing but flesh, okay? Because that can't enter in the kingdom anyway. And so you might get bit. You might get. You might go through all of that. Oh, oh, hamashe. God bless you, bro. Okay, you might go through all of that. But let me let you know this: <laughs> that you are going to come through because if you make it here to the spirit man, then that man is going to push out everything that don't belong in the soul. He's going to push out everything that don't belong in the flesh. He's going to purge you because our God is a consuming fire and he's going to burn out everything that shouldn't be there. He's going to burn it out of you. Nothing that should not be there will be able to stand in you because you are connected to the great I am. I say you're connected to your daddy. You're connected to your father and nobody, I say that nobody can hurt you because you're connected to him. Oh, hallelujah. So it don't matter what it looks like on the outside. It don't matter if it look dead on the outside. Well, you don't want to walk with the dead to be a part of that. You want to go in towards the life that is able to, come on, heal the sick, raise the dead, and put people in their rightful place in the heavenly domains. And that goes back to the mind, the mind, the mind. I didn't say the soul. The soul is a under the influence right now. It's under the influence of the knowledge of the world. It's under the influence of those that are preaching the truth, but ain't no truth inside of them. And that's why they turn on you and try to eat you down, eat you up and try to beat you down. They're snakes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. They're snakes. You're going to get bit by scorpions. You're going to get bit by snakes. You're going to get bit because you're outside. But if you got God on the inside, I'm telling you, you can drink daily port and it ain't going to harm you. And this is what we need for this hour because they're getting ready to do another spray. They're exterminating people. Y'all, they're exterminating people. Jesus. And people are what? Trapped outside? And you're going to let them trick you with treats? I said, you're going to let them trick you with treats. No, you knowing you gon' you finding out whether or not you were with him in the beginning. Because if you were with your father, you going for him. You going for him wholeheartedly. And you know those that belong to him. And so if you're with the world, the world went after the world. Uh-huh. The world went after the world. Now I know that I'm supposed to go into the world and I'm supposed to draw men to Christ. But come on, I can't be a part of the world and go into the world. That means I can sit with the drunkard, I can sit with the people that are not saved because they're looking for the truth and they don't want the lie that they see in the church. Yeah, I can sit with them and lead them into a real truth, a real truth that will liberate them from the thing that told them that they were held in captivity. But look at, what, look at what the words say in the 12th verse here. It goes on to say, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. What's going on out here? Um, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Well, that's not happening. They're obeying that sin in the lust thereof. Neither yield, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. And those that are praying against people, those that are trying to stop people from moving or progressing, you ain't nothing but the servant of the devil. That's who you are. But that's okay because Judas was the servant of the devil. And we need you. We need you in order to move in and see the power of God manifested in our immortal soul. We need you, I said. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -mm. So you don't yield yourself as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto Yah or God as those that are alive from the dead. Are you truly alive from the dead? I don't think so. Uh-huh. Are you truly alive from the dead? I don't think so. <laughs> You're not alive from the dead. Uh-huh. Because if you was, you wouldn't be living in sin. And okay, all right. If you was, you but you can't you can't blame people because that's how they've been taught. If you've been taught the wrong way, you're gonna go the wrong way. But you don't want to hear the right. But see, what is it gonna take? Is it gonna take more people dying? Is it gonna take systems collapsing? Is it gonna take you being come on, you being come on, uh, knocked out of work, not having no money? What is it going to take for you to go towards your eternal father so you can be a conduit for those that are lost in the world system? What is it going to take? I hope it don't take that. I really do. I hope it don't take that. And your members as a member, as instruments of righteousness for sin shall not have dominion over you for ye are not under the law, but under grace and grace is the spirit of God given to you to have strength. 
in a time of weakness. And you know, people use grace as a means to have a pass. They say, well, you know, it's because of the grace of God. No, the grace of God, Paul said, look, look, your grace is sufficient. It is strength when I'm weak. That's what Paul said. He didn't say that it gives me a pass. He said it gives me strength in the place of weakness. So if you got grace, then you should have enough strength to stand up for the Lord. You should have enough strength to put your flesh up under. You should have enough strength to do what you're supposed to do. But grace have been used as a pass, as a pass to do whatever you want to do and say that God is in it. He is holy. Do you realize that he is holy? And if you go to live in him, you're going to live holy. Uh, holy means to be complete. Holy means to be made whole in the thing that he have designed you to be. Let me go to this last um, verse and then I'm done. I'm back at eight. I'm going to this last verse. This last verse. Um, it's, it's three verses, you guys. I'm going to start at 17. And if any children, then heirs of God or Yah, and, and, and join heirs. He's talking about um, being a witness and being the children of Yah. And if you are a child of Yah, then you're going to be an heir. And that heir is not somebody that has to compromise the truth to get what they want for their flesh. That's the flesh. That's the flesh. But it's somebody that is waiting for their set time of redemption. And you will be redeemed because we all have an appointed time. We all have an appointed time. So don't be discouraged when your time is not yet. Go ahead and let God finish the process. Go ahead and let God finish doing whatever he's going to do. But don't be discouraged when your time is not yet. For I reckon that the suffering of, and people think you're not supposed to suffer, but the Bible says that I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed on the inside of us. And so there is some glory that's going to come because after the flesh is broken, after the soul is converted, then the spirit inside is able to be redeemed, is able to be restored, and it comes back and it comes to invade the soul. It comes to overtake the flesh, and in the spirit do we move and live and have our existence? Well, this is the way of the Lord where he, re come on, it, it was a revolution where he turned that thing that happened in the garden back around again. And so the flesh had no more dominion. Uh-huh. The flesh had no more dominion. Uh-huh. Oh, hallelujah. And now the spirit man has made it out to the, come on, the outer court. The spirit man has made it all the way outside and now we're walking in him. We're moving in him. So when somebody bite us, when somebody try to destroy us. They're not coming after us anymore. They're coming after our eternal father in which we dwell, which is dangerous. So pray for your enemies because they don't know. They truly don't know. They don't know. For I reckon, but, 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 but it say for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of Yahweh. Well, this is not happening because people are locked outside in the carnal worm and they are living out of appetite. Okay. For the creature was made subject. I just wanted y'all to know that we were made subject to this life because of what happened with Adam. And so the teachers and those that are developing you, those that are, are giving you the insight that you're supposed to have, is supposed to let you know that we were made the spirit man that's in us waiting to be redeemed, restored. The spirit man within us waiting to be redeemed and restored. He was made subjugated to the flesh, to the soul that is subject to the knowledge of the world. Come on, not on purpose. It, it said it was vanity. He was made subject to it without any permission of his own. But God, but Christ came to redeem us. He came to restore us. And this is the place that we ought to seek. And the closer we get to him, the more we die out here. Everything around us dies. It has to in order for the newness of life to come to pass. So don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. And so I just wanted you to know that we are all like sheep led to the slaughter, but nothing will be able to separate you from his love. I don't care how much they try to penetrate the flesh, how much they try to penetrate the soul with their nastiness, with their evil spirits. Don't worry about that. The Holy Ghost that's inside of you will purge you and clean you and make you like it never, ever happened. Okay, because he's there. But those that have been offensive in doing such thing, the Bible say it have been better for them to hang a millstone 
around their neck and to cast themselves into the sea. Oh, hallelujah. So pray for your enemies because they don't know. They actually think that you're just religious like everybody else. But some of us have surrendered show enough. Some of us have surrendered ourselves to him. And some of us have sold out completely. And we kept nothing for the world. We gave up everything. I said everything. Family, friends, foe, everything. We gave it all up. Money, material, we gave it all up. So we can have power coming from within. And sometimes you got to make that sacrifice. It all depends on whether or not you've been chosen to do so. So, remember this. When, when the enemy come to discourage you. Remember this. That Christ that died, yea rather that rose again. Who is even on the right hand side of Yah. Who also maketh intercession. He praying for us y'all. He want us to make it for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. I don't care. Look, you might feel stuff outside, but it's outside the house. But it can't separate you from the love that's in you. There's a love in you and nothing will be able to separate you from that love. But you got to get to them. Shell tribulations or <laughs> Or distress. Oh, you're going to go through. Or persecution. Oh, they're going to persecute you. Or famine. Oh, you're going to go through some, you're going to go through some lack. It's going to be a whole lot of lack. He, to, to a degree that he called it famine. Or nakedness. You look like you ain't got nothing on. You ain't got nothing covering you. But the Bible say that in him we are dwelling. Or nakedness. Or perilous time. Or sword. Oh, you're going to get ate up. And they're going to use the word of God to cut you. Because they are not physicians. They are butchers oh hallelujah and there is a difference because a butcher come to cut and kill but a physician comes to cut to heal you ain't get an uh uh they don't use the bible to destroy you they use the, the bible to restore you oh hallelujah and so when we understand this we understand that this is a process that we must go through whether they tell you the truth or not know that if you are carnally minded you are walking in death you are walking in death and they don't want anybody to know that oh yes I look dead. I look trapped. No, no, no. I'm in him. I'm in the refuge of my father. So when the spray begin, I am covered. Are you covered? That's what you got to be concerned with. When, uh, hey, the vaccine ain't going to cover you. They already saying that in two years, though, they got the vaccine is going to die. And so the vaccine ain't going to cover you. And I pray that that is not true because some of my family got the vaccine. I pray that that's not true. But it was a French doctor that said it. He was a, 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 a virologist. He did. He, he deal with viruses. Mm. Hallelujah. And they continue to build churches. It's the truth, sis. It's crazy, ain't it? It's crazy. Satan has them under a trance. They under that trance I was talking about. But look at what it said. It said that you're going to go through the famine. You're going to go through the perilous time. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed. It said we are killed for your sake all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh-huh. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. When you understand this, then you don't break down when they come for you. And yes, yeah, you, you got all this stuff attached to you. But honey, uh, brother, let me tell you something. That stuff going to fall off as the fire of God continues to permeate through the soul to the outer court. And once it's finished, everything connected to you, you're going to drop. <laughs> Don't worry about any of that, okay? Don't worry about it because you're connected to the great I am. Oramashe, oh hallelujah. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors because we have conquered the outer man. We have conquered the lies and the deceptions of the soul. We have conquered all things uh -huh, through him that love us because we came through love. We wouldn't stop when they start taking everything. We wouldn't stop when they start fighting us. We wouldn't stop. Uh -huh. We kept on moving in towards the father where the kingdom lie. For I am persecuted. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any 
other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of our eternal father. Nothing can separate us. I said nothing can separate us unless we live on the outside. Didn't we live in fear? Didn't we live in distress? Didn't we live in things that we shouldn't be living in because we have not been taken into the house? Oh, hallelujah, which is in Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Holy One of Israel. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, you don't like that part. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Don't worry about it, you guys. I got it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let, let, me, let, me, let me take this thing down some. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me, you guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he got a little mad at that one. I hope you guys can still see me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, this one is this one is something else, right? There you go. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There you go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope you can still see me. Hallelujah. So listen, you guys, I want I want to tell you that you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. I said you're going to make it. Yes, you are. You're going to make it. You don't realize it. Sorry, y'all. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You are. But everything out here got to die in order for the thing in you, which is the great I am, I, eternal father, to live. Everything out here got to die. So no matter how it looks out here, if it's dying, it means that you're living from within. And what's coming is going to require life. Somebody going to have to be living in the light of God. Somebody going to have to be on the inside of the house so they can heal the sick. We get in, y'all. Guess what's going to happen? Guess, guess what's going to happen if we get in? What's going to happen is that we're going to be able to show COVID that it ain't got no power. When you get in, you're going to be able to show everybody that what's on the outside is not greater than the great I am that lives inside of you. But if you don't get in, then people are going to die like the world. And that is the great deception that Satan has everybody in. So when you live out here, you're in the 30 percent. You're still on the outer court trying to keep yourself clean. And that's where the snakes are coming. That's where the scorpions are coming. And they biting everybody. They biting. But don't worry about it. Just go on. And it, it deposits into the soul. But the soul is at, in a revolution process because the word is turning the soul. It's turning it back towards its creator. But once you get inside, the power of the almighty, I said the power of the almighty begins to first out. It begins to resurrect. It begins to redeem and it begins to push out of you by the fire of the Holy Spirit that that was polluted, the soul. It pushes out everything in the soul that don't belong there. And it works its way out to the outer court where there is power. We're supposed to be in power. Oh, hallelujah. We're supposed to be in the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. So don't worry about anything. Don't you fret yourself because of evildoers of those that seem to prosper in their way. That is not what it's all about. It's about collecting the harvest and getting people in to the truth before the time run out and so that's 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 the end of all of that that's the end hallelujah glory to god it's gonna get bad tracy it's gonna get real bad sis and people are not going to be prepared that, that nothing is they're, they're gonna make things worse they're tricking people and you're going after the treat and they're trapped people on the outside and people are not inside they're not inside. Yes, 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 um, Apostle Verinda. Congratulations, too, on your promotion. Oh, hallelujah. They're tricking people. You understand? So um, I'm going to tell you about the courses. I'm going to tell you about the courses um, because um, we got courses coming up next month. And so I want to talk about those real quick. I couldn't give it to you last time. Got a little dark, huh? But um, I'm going to keep on going. And so um, um um, August 13th is when the courses begin, and you can go to Eventbrite if you are interested in the courses. Um, the first course is called Spiritual Identity Theft, and that's because we've been robbed by nature. I said we've been robbed by nature. They, they reduced everything down to the flesh, and they make us feel righteous based on what we do. Uh huh. I'm going to show you how they did that. They, they make everybody feel good based on what they do outwardly, but it has nothing to do with their spiritual identity and who they were purpose and destined to be. The 
identity has been robbed to accommodate an antichrist system. So we're going to talk about that. We And I give a 10 page workbook so you can see exactly how they did what they did. Okay. Um, the second course is the origin of man-made religion. And what I did is I didn't know why I had to do this, but God made me study most of the religion, religions that you see. Uh -huh. I had to study these religions because God wanted me to know their origin and how they were formed and how they come, came about. And so you got to see how these religions came about. They were man-made and they, they brought people into a place of, come on, um, righteousness based on flesh. And the people that made these religions are those that experienced God and then created a whole doctrine out of their own experience. And so we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with the context of that and you will get that workbook. It's a workbook that comes with each um, course and people generally continue to study. And most, you know, what's really weird. Most of the people that are coming are the people that kept coming. And so I'm, I'm kind of glad, but I want new people to come. I, I want new people to come in. And so we got a few new people that have signed up um, from my um, YouTube page and a whole lot of LA people. And if you're not sincere, you got to be careful now, because if you're not doing this thing with a sincere heart, I'm not taking you into religion. I'm taking you into the mind of God. And so there could be repercussions if the heart is deceitful, if the heart is not sincere. But if you truly love God, then these are the courses for you to get you into a place of power before the time run out. Um, breach birth is being born upside down. Um, upside down is people that are still spiritually born. Uh huh. They have been, they have been, uh, it's an upside down kingdom. They're talking kingdom, but they're not in the mind of God. They're in the mind of a man. They're not living out of the heavenly domain. They're living out of the earthly domain. And so it's an upside down kingdom. It's a breach birth. That's, oh my God. And that hurts. It hurts real bad because stuff is not really coming together for you because you are not coming out of the womb based on headship. I'm talking about the headship of Christ. I'm not talking about the headship of a man. And if they have not been crowned by Christ, then you're living out of their philosophy. You're living out of their, come on, ideology. You're living out of their experience and they cannot get you to your eternal father. And this is the reason for death. The flesh cannot continue if you're going to end up in the spiritual place. We got to get rid of that. That thing ain't our friend. It's not our friend. Look, guys, I love you with an everlasting love. And God bless each and every one of you that have come. I really appreciate that. I had to put some light on the scene. I, um, God bless each and every one of you that have come. I really appreciate that. And 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 look, understand that when people begin to um, cut off, when, you, when you're getting cut off, that's a death. Death is part of the flesh process. We got to die out here. And everything connected to us is going to die along with it. And we're going to deal with our Judases. We're going to deal with those that talk and that want to dismantle our name and, and discourage. They want to do all this stuff. But people that talk about people generally talk about everybody. And most of the time, they're nothing but liars. So I don't listen to gossip and I don't let people bring me anything about anybody because I don't really want to hear all that. OK, but I do know that when you connect with people, it's not sincere anymore. People got their own motives. They have their own intention for connecting with you. You just stay connected with the Lord and he's going to do what he said he would do at the appointed time. We all have our own season, our own appointed time to come forth. And mine is an end time. And so people are going to want the truth, unfortunately, when it get real, real bad. It's always good to come before it get real, real bad. But people don't want it then. Their appetite has a greater voice. Their ego has a greater voice. But I am here to offer a way in to the mind of God. And if you desire to go in or to, and, and, and I'm not the only one that teaches in these courses, you guys. Um, I'm not, I, I just kind of got tired of holding this. I'm not the only one that teaches. I let everybody kind of have, because people know stuff that I don't know. And so it's a good thing not to, um, it's a good thing not to think you know it all. Okay. So there are people that are in the courses that add to the class. And I like that because I learn from other people. I like that. I think that we can all learn from each other.
So I really love that. Okay. So, um, just come on in and whatever God gives to you. Um, if this, if this biblical, if this sound, if it's not something that's, I, I, I don't do, I'm, I'm solid in myself and you can, and it's easy to, um, to, to kind of curve somebody in the right direction without hurting their feelings or, you know, being rude or mean. You don't have to do none of that because people have been taught by all kind of people. All right. So <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate because that's how the church was set up. Okay, but Christ said the gates of hell cannot prevail against what's inside of you. So it's time to go in because they're going to do another spray. I love you guys with an everlasting love. You guys have a blessed and wonderful, wonderful week. Okay, um, we got a class tonight for you, um, 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 Jermaine. Don't forget the course for tonight, okay? All right, this is the last course for the month, and that was um, the, the Nephilim takeover, okay? Um, you didn't get the first part. I think you had to work or something, but this is the Nephilim takeover. So this is the last um, class for this particular topic, and then you guys can go ahead and sign up for next month. Um, it's been a pleasure. I feel that I'm doing what I was designed and destined to do. I do realize that a lot of my stuff is for leadership, and when they're ready, I'll be here. God bless you. Take care. Have a great day mm -hmm. and a great weekend.